if the government's going to run Obamacare, the bureaucracy, the way they've run Obamacare, the IT rollout, is it any wonder why people are becoming more skeptical of how Obamacare is in its current form? Let's talk about glitch, glitch, glitch on a happy Friday here on Get Right with Lenny McAllister starting right now. Get Right with Lenny McAllister. By any means necessary. Well spoken. The way we help bring back America and we build the bridges and bring people together is by making sure we hold everybody accountable in a 360 fashion. So let me close with this. Yes, there is a change that we can believe in, but it will never come from a politician or a government program. We cannot buy citizen land in here the land of Lincoln. So Carbondale and Elgin, that we can let the Lincoln people tolerate the insane power on the streets of South Chicago and he said the war. We got to move away from the American Idol soundbite nature of politics and back to the American statesman of humble servant leadership that we used to see in politics. It is time to roll out the era of the new, educated, engaged, and energized American citizens. I go to the jail ministry. I speak to the kids in the streets. So I'm never going to lay down being a conservative just as much as I'll never lay down being a proud African American. Feel like a black public money I got coming in. First of all, let me welcome you once again to Get Right with Lenny McAllister, the podcast that features you and me here at LennyMcAllister.com allows us to have the back and forth interaction that we love to have on Facebook, which is very simple. Go to tinyurl.com backslash Lenny Page. L-E-N-N-Y-P-A-G-E. You can also go to Twitter, very simple, L-E-N-N-Y-M-C-A-L-L-I-S-T-E-R is my Twitter name. Love to get your feedback, your interaction. I enjoy the people that are following me online, on social media, as we continue to have these conversations with these brief but fun types of interactions in regards to what's going on with the government shutdown, which is now hitting almost two full weeks it's been two, pretty much two business weeks, and everybody seems to have a point in regards to why they're taking the positions that they're taking. And, and, I, and I have to apologize right now. I do not want to sound like a cheerleader for the Republican Party. I am a Republican. I am a conservative. I don't do the cheerleading thing very well. I was never taught to pick up pom-poms and shake them and, and ignore what My team may be doing wrong. I was raised to fix it. My whole life has been about that. So as I get into this, I I want to put that out there right now because as soon as I dive into this today, I guarantee you somebody's going to respond on Facebook, respond on Twitter, send me an email, something, and say, there you go again. You're cheerleading for the Republican Party. You're ignoring the facts. I'm not ignoring the facts. And, but there are there are certain facts I'm going to bring up. I mean, I've brought up why I think the Republicans have gone too far. I've talked about that repeatedly. Again, I was on Chinese television last night talking to folks in Beijing, half a world away, explaining how the Republican Party, and I've said this repeatedly, the Republican Party has not recognized what wins are. When it comes to this legislative process with this historically elected president. They have refused to acknowledge what a win looks like, and then peace wins together. Instead, what they have done is they have gone all or nothing, pretty much the same way the Democrats went all or nothing in 2009. And the Democrats all or nothing with Obamacare in 2009 negotiating amongst themselves led to the Tea Party wave of electoral wins in November 2010. Just the same The Tea Party, which had a win in December 2010 with the extension of the Bush era tax rates, instead, when it got to the fall of 2011, did not negotiate proactively and did not understand what a win was when it came to getting certain concessions and then building upon those. Instead, they went all or nothing, and subsequently, we lost lost our AAA credit rating as a nation. And then Republicans lost winnable elections in 2012. Now, we did lose some winnable elections in 2010 as well, but 2012 is what stung the most. 
And so we are where we are. But with that said, I have brought that up previously for those that are either in the middle or on the left or just, you know, of the of the mindset that conservatives don't want to be fair about what has transpired politically over the last several years. I do bring that up. And to be quite honest, it gets me in trouble with the conservative movement from time to time because they think that. I should just rail against the liberals, rail against the progressives, rail against the Democrats, and rail against this president ad nauseum and not acknowledge the flaws within our own political realm. And that's not being American. That's just being partisan. And I, you know, I know that the Republican Party has an elephant for its, its icon, for its you know, mascot or whatever, but I don't know if we say the Pledge of Allegiance to an icon – to a caricature, to some type of partisan symbol. We say the Pledge of Allegiance to the American flag. So when it comes to certain things, I'm just going to point out the flaws on both sides and hope that my party fixes it in order to win elections, in order to help the diversity of America. That's just where I am with that. So I'm putting that out there, but I have to get to this now. The more I read about this and the more I see this, the more I have to ask the question, particularly as... Somebody that was an IT professional for about 15 years. In my first life, from about probably the age of 23 until even after I graduated from Davidson, I was an IT professional. I was a computer programmer. I rolled out projects. I I did reactive work and proactive work. We planned projects. We did training. We did all these things. We did it around Y2K. When everybody thought the world was going to end and people were collecting, you know, gallons of water and canned foods and everything else, buying generators and buying tents and, you know, all that other jazz. I know what it takes to plan a project from an IT perspective. And I'm not the only one and I'm not a genius with this, but I've been through this. I've been through all the different phases. And you're not going to tell me that with all these glitches that have gone on, And you're not going to tell me with the resources that the United States federal government has. And you're not going to tell me that since this law was passed in, what, April of 2010, you've had over three years to plan for this law? I mean, heck, the Republicans voted to defund it 40-some-odd times. It didn't stop anything. So guess what? The money was still there. The planning should have continued on. And especially after the Supreme Court decision last summer. You've had roughly 15 months of full steam ahead momentum to take care of this. And even if you don't want to say 15 months, after November of last year, you have had 11 months of full steam ahead momentum. If you are the bureaucracy of the federal government, if you are the Obama administration, if you are working as a contractor or part of the federal government to make sure that Obamacare on October 1st, 2013 rolled out the right way. Now, with that said, with all the resources, all the planning, and all the time that has gone on into putting this together, if this is what it looks like 11 days into this, what is it? What it's today's the eleventh? Eleven days into this, with all the testing and all the programming scripts and all the scenarios that you go through and understanding, you know the numbers, you know how many people may possibly hit the website. You know that Republicans may try to crash the site, terrorists may try to crash the site, just pure volume may try to crash the site. You should have been trying to break this thing in 2011. You should have been trying to break this thing in in the testing environments in 2010 and in 2012 and earlier this year. If this is what Obamacare looks like from an IT perspective and the spin from the Obama administration is, well, you know, just tell us your glitches and we'll fix them. Because we knew there would be glitches, but hey, you know how it is. It's good. It done be good. It's all good. We'll take care of it. No, you don't get that luxury. I mean, heck, major IT corporations, major technology organizations, for-profit 
organizations don't get that leniency. If you roll out a brand new phone from Sprint, from Verizon, from T-Mobile, from AT&T, and it's horrible, the connectivity is awful, the usability is marginal at best, people can't figure it out, things get hung up, you drop calls, you can't connect to the internet, it overheats, it shuts itself off, guess what's going to happen to your organization? You're going to take a huge hit in the marketplace, and you should, which then means that you have to concede certain things as an organization. You got to bring the price down. You got to put out there some free patches to the software. You got to put out some free concessions in order to keep customers engaged, keep them satisfied. Make sure that your organization doesn't tank. Go from second to fourth place for the next three years over a bad rollout. Now, where am I going with this? It's obvious. Obamacare, with the technical rollout, has been bad. And here's the point. If the technical rollout has been bad, if the political spin around the technical rollout has been marginal at best, and I would dare say not even good. These aren't even good explanations. Well, you, you know, the reason why it's crashing is because of all the traffic. It means it's extremely popular. So what? It means a lot of people went to your website. There's a lot of people that go to porn websites. There's a lot of people that go to the Kardashians' websites. There's a lot of people that go to ESPN. They're not all going to ESPN.com for the same reason. Some are going for soccer. Some are just going for the highlights. Some are going for the NFL. Some are going to see when their favorite show is coming on. Some are just curious as to what's on the home page. All this traffic isn't because people are all trying to sign up. And furthermore, if you were going to use that argument, and this is the thing I have about the Obama administration in general, agree, disagree, you know where to find me on Twitter, Facebook, Twitter, my first and last name, Facebook, tinyurl.com, backslash Lenny Page. The Obama administration it, it always seems to try to explain stuff retroactively, reactively, after the, the, the horse is out of the barn. And it's it's just not good. Now, if there were a better Republican brand name out there, they would be able to bash him over the head repeatedly with the middle, with the independent voter, with the moderate voter. Maybe we have a different president in 2012, 2013. Or at the very least, maybe this president negotiates sooner than now with the Republicans. But this always seems to be the case. This is, you know, this is the same thing, like, for example, with Iraq. Well, you know, we entered the war. No, you screwed up the negotiations. So you couldn't get an extension. So you're pulling the troops out before you wanted to pull the troops out. So you put a political spin on it. Now, that's what politicians do. I get that. Not all politicians do that. Mo the vast majority of them do. They shouldn't, but they do. But it's hard to spin this. And those that are in corporate America understand that this is nothing more than a political spin on a technological issue that should have been addressed. You address it one way or another. If you can't handle all this traffic because you know people are going to try to blow it up because they're being malicious and you know that you may get a higher spike than normal and you know that people are just going to try it just because to see what transpires. If you know that you can't handle that, you roll it out in phases. Oh, kind of like the Obama administration's already been doing with the employer mandate and the wide-ranging cast of exceptions granted to certain constituents. You continue the self-repeal, even if you tarry it out, even if it's piece by piece that you roll this out. You do that because from, from the Obama administration perspective, this needs to be successful. It's more important for it to be successful than it is to be right on October 1st. And this goes to, and, and I've heard people say this about President Obama, I've heard it in Chicago, and I've heard it around the country. I've heard it from Democrats that won't go on record, and I've heard it from Republicans that go all across the record, <laughs> social media and the like. There's a certain level of arrogance that comes from this administration that is not good to have in the Oval Office. Yes, you want a president that has broad shoulders, that has guts, 
whether it's a man for the first 44 or a, a woman that's going to happen very, very soon in the near future. may not be 2016, but we're going to have a lady president soon, and kudos to that. You know, my generation can care less. We've seen leaders that are both men, women, black, white. We can care less. We don't care. But regardless, you want, a, you want a president that has some guts, that has some brains, has some broad shoulders, and has a spine. But arrogance in the face of... Of avoidable failure. Some failure you can't avoid. This was an avoidable failure. When you have a leader that has arrogance in the face of avoidable failure, that's when you have to take a step back and ask, who else should be in leadership as you're navigating complex situations? Such as healthcare reform, such as a bad economy, such as a tenuous global standing. Even what we just had in Syria. And I said it previously. Anytime you have a guy that was a leader in the KGB look like a Nobel Peace Prize winner. And the Nobel Peace Prize winner looks like a warmonger. You know something ain't right. No, you, you know at that point in time you have to go and look at the leadership once again and say where are we. And I'm not going to take it all the way to everything in the Obama presidency. But I am going to say... In regards to Obamacare, if the IT rollout looks like this, and it's being blotched this bad, and the glitches are still out there, and the possibility for these many glitches, when those reports came out, were ignored, and they pushed it out on, pushed it out on October 1st anyway, regardless of what the reports said, out of arrogance in order to be right, when you already have a self-repeal that has been in place for a little while now, is it any wonder why the Republicans are saying hold off? Because my point with this goes down this path. If the IT rollout looks like this, what's the bureaucracy going to look like? How is the administration of Obamacare going to look like? If the nuts and bolts, stuff that is based on basic logic, and it's still logic. Programming is logic. Now, it gets complex. I understand the if-then loops and everything else and the scripts. I mean, I'm not downplaying what IT is. But I am saying that it's still based on simple logic. There, there are no human emotions or considerations going into how you program the website, how you get through the process. And if that is going to be screwed up, if the IC, IT side of this is going to be screwed up, and on top of that, from what we're seeing... The explanation around it is going to be wishy-washy. It's going to be squishy. It's going to be Washington Beltway speak. And that's how they're going to address it. That's how they're going to spin it like it's any other political issue. And you're talking about people's lives. You're talking about 16% of the American economy. And that's how you're going to spin it. And this is how we're going to roll this out. This is how we're going to deal with this project. I'm scared of to see what the bureaucracy is going to look like. Because if it's going to take a while to fix this, and now you're seeing reports, by the way, that they're saying if this doesn't get fixed soon, the whole rollout of this program is going to get pushed back, which, again, goes back to the self-repeal. Just repeal it. Just let it ride for six months to a year. Go ahead with the delay. Let it come out in stages. Get ahead of the game. You know, I'm giving President Obama and, and the Democrats free advice. Don't let the Republicans hijack this message. But yet here we are, and the Republicans, my party, conservatives, are right on this. If this is how you're going to handle the IT aspect of this, what does the bureaucracy look like? And nobody's asking that question right there. What do the people behind Obamacare look like? How are they organized together? How are these marketplaces really going to interact with each other? How are their doctors in the hospital systems? We're hearing some examples of it, the very early stages of it. But for something at a, at a grander scale, what is that going to look like? Because if the IT screwed up, and that's nothing but basic programming logic, quote-unquote basic programming logic, what does the bureaucracy look like when you're having human emotion, human interaction, human decision making, and human mistakes involved? And yeah, no programming has human mistakes in it as well. 
Some of that, though, was the mistake of not having enough servers, not um, having enough time to get through all the bugs. That's the arrogance I'm talking to. But bureaucracy is an ongoing thing. You can fix the technology and eventually get to a point in time where you're always dealing with a quote-unquote human glitch in the bureaucracy. We're seeing this on an ongoing basis the more we go down this Obamacare rabbit hole. And this is in production. This is real time. This is not theory, which makes you ask the question, if this is what we're going to get from the IT side, what are we going to get from the bureaucratic side? Isn't it perhaps worth delaying this? And I know that as the Republicans are up there discussing this with President Obama, that people such as Representative Paul Ryan has taken delaying Obamacare off the table. But I wouldn't. I wouldn't take it. I wouldn't leave it on the table publicly, perhaps, but I would still be bringing it up. And the reason why I would still be bringing it up is very, very simple. We don't need any more glitches. We have enough glitches with the economy. We have seen banks get money in order to unfreeze credit markets for small businesses, and they basically bought up other banks, and people are still having a hard time getting their hands on money. We're seeing all the types of instances where Wall Street has succeeded and rebounded in Main Street. People just don't even look for work anymore. We already have enough glitches in the American society right now getting through this recession that quote-unquote ended in 2009. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Why do we need to introduce any more glitches to the American people? I think that at this point of time, privately, I would still be going to the president and saying, can we at least delay this until April 15th? Can we at least delay this until January 1st? We'll give you the six-week window to open up negotiations, raise up the the debt ceiling, and then let's get to a year-long budget. Let's deal with the debt ceiling permanently or quote-unquote permanently in regards to a year-long budget from that perspective. And can we please delay the individual mandate for just a little while, two months, six months, until it gets fixed? And we'll, we'll be part of the solution because the bottom line is Republicans are not going to be able to win this endeavor in 2013 and 2014. They have to win it in 2016. They have to modify Obamacare to get to a point where it no longer looks like Obamacare. That's the only way they're going to win this situation with Obamacare. If they're trying to repeal, if they're trying to defund, if they're trying to derail, they're not going to win that political high ground. They just It hasn't happened. It hasn't happened for years. It definitely isn't happening during the shutdown. Why continue it? But If you are willing to say you'll be part of the solution, the Obama administration, through their arrogance, has given you plenty, plenty of fodder, glitches here, there, and everywhere. Now where the liberal media is reporting the glitches, that's enough fodder for you to say there are ways for us to look like the hero in this. There are ways to say we told you so without verbally saying we told you so. And at this point in time, the Republican Party has to sit there and ask themselves, are we willing to speak without saying a word? Are we willing to say, I told you so, through our actions and actions that move the nation forward versus just saying it aloud and pointing a finger? Because that hasn't worked for us. By basically making the case strongly, quietly, but effectively. If this is what we're going to get from Obamacare, the IT project, the project that you all work on in corporate America every single day, if that's what we're going to get from Obamacare, the IT corporate project, and this is the explanation we're going to get as an American people regarding the gaps and the glitches and the problems with this monster, this Frankenstein of a healthcare reform approach. If that's what we're going to get, maybe it's time to delay this. Maybe it's time for us to come in and help make the monster run like a machine. And we have to do that with the continuation of the self-repeal. We have to do that with the continuation of Republican-driven ideas for true healthcare reform to get costs down 
And we have to do this through getting our debt under control and our spending under control. Can the Republican Party do that quietly and effectively and say if the IT rollout is bad, just imagine what the bureaucratic rollout is going to look like January 1st, 2014, if we don't delay this now. And do it quietly, but do it effectively. What do you all think? I'm, I'm putting it out there a little longer than normal, but hey, I, I'm sick of hearing about these computer glitches with this Obamacare program. So I want to hear your feedback. Again, you know where to find me on Twitter. It is simple, L-E-N-N-Y-M-C-A-L-L-I-S-T-E-R. You know where to find me on Facebook as well. You have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. And don't forget, don't forget, don't forget, I will be on Al Jazz America, Al Jazeera America, tomorrow morning, 7.30 Eastern Time, 6.30 Central Time. I love you all. Have a wonderful weekend. TCNGB, I love you. Peace.